Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all an update to my Phantom Knights Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile for post the January 2020 ban list. With the release of the new ban list, they moved around a few things that changed what made the Phantom Knights rank up spell very, very broken, including the um, outer entities, I believe, as a thought, and I, believe, I can't remember the other names of the other one, but it ended up hitting the rank up spell, making it so you couldn't play some of the plays to get out some of the higher level Phantom Knight rank exceeds with the deck, but I'm glad that they at least took out the entities and let us have the rank up spell back. It makes it so we can get Dark Requiem back out with the deck much, much easier and a bunch of other extra deck plays. So I figured an update was due for the deck just to see with all the different changes. And with Master Rule, uh, a few months away, we're going to have more plays four exceeds out on the field which is definitely going to be a big help for the deck as well that focuses mostly on exceeds and not so much link plays so let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile so to start off for the phantom knights monsters i run three for the phantom knights of ancient cloak all the phantom knight monsters have different effects on the field and then also different effects in the graveyard with ancient cloak if this card is in attack position you can target one dark monster on the field change this card to defense and if you do that monster gains 800 attack and defense until the end of your opponent's turn you can banish this card from your graveyard and add one <laughs> phantom knights card from your the hand except the phantom knights ancient cloak making sure you can search a good amount of cards especially with this card as long as it's a the phantom knights card you can only use each effect of the phantom knights of ancient cloak once per turn so the attack gain isn't as important i would say as the overall search effect you have with this card being able to search out a the phantom knights card from your uh, deck to the hand so very very useful for all of those searches that you can perform with this card getting different resources to use the boost comes in handy at times but like i said definitely uh the majority of all the different Phantom Knight monsters' effects rely on the graveyard for their effects, including the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots, which I also run three of. If you control a Phantom, the Phantom Knights monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots once per turn this way. You can banish this card from your graveyard to add one Phantom Knights spell or trap from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Phantom Knights of Silent Boots once per turn. So going for our new... Uh, Phantom Knights rank up spell with the deck being searchable with uh, either Ancient Cloak or Silent Boots since it is the Phantom Knights rank up magic launch. Very, very useful to search out that card for a lot of your different plays or you can even search out Fog Blade or any of the other Phantom Knights traps we run in the deck with Silent Boots after you use it for an Exceed Summon and you detach it for the effect of that Exceed monster putting it in the graveyard. And I, lastly, for the Phantom Knight Monsters, which is always just the best of the three trio, the Phantom Knights of Ragged Gloves, a dark Exceed monster that was summoned with this card on the field and has Exceed material as it gains this effect. If the Exceed summon, it gains 1,000 attack. You can banish this card from your graveyard to send one Phantom Knights card from your deck to the graveyard. You can use each effect of Phantom Knights of Ragged Gloves once per turn. So you can set up either your Silent Boots or your Ancient Cloak in the graveyard with Ragged Gloves or any of the other spell and traps to get the additional special summon effect that those cards have in the graveyard so good setup with ragged gloves and just overall great power as well for your exceed monsters on the field that use it for the dark exceed summons and then for a little more generic support to help with the rank 3 XC summons, I run 3 Kagamusha Knight. When you normal summon a level 3 monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. This card cannot be used as a synchro material, but just summoning out one of the Phantom Knight cards, then special summoning Kagamusha Knight is the rank 3 play right there. Or you can even just use it for link summoning if you have some other plays you might want to go for is a great option also. I also run three Marauding Captain. The fact that the Phantom Knights are warrior monsters just works very well uh, with Marauding Captain. Also, your opponent cannot target warrior monsters for attacks except this one. When this card is normal summon, you can special summon one level four or lower monster from your hand. So vice versa, you could summon a Marauding Captain, then special summon a Phantom Knight card from your hand to the field, and then go for the Exceed play. Both Kagamusha Knight and Marauding Captain just help for more easy special summons from your hand to the field to go for your Exceed plays. And another one being a Junk Forward, which I also run three of, just helps for the overall play of this card, being able to overlay with it after special summoning it if you control no monsters, which going first or second is just an added bonus with Junk Forward on the field. And then for a few more link plays, including a sold, which I still love running the play in the deck, which is very, very helpful for special summoning out cards. I run three Blue Mountain Butter Spy. 
Uh, cannot be normal summon or set. When you normal summon a warrior monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Cannot be used as synchro material, but if you want to and you have the level four options on the field to go for, you can go for Dark Rebellion Exceeds and then go for the rank up if you have the spell in your hand with Blue Mountain Butter Spy and the last of our monsters, which is Armageddon Knight, which I run one of. Just being able to set up any of our Phantom Knight monsters in the graveyard with this card is another added use. And then being able to special summon Butter Spy out gives us our Exceed play to go into also. And both are also searchable off of Reinforcements of the Army, which is an added bonus as well. And that's it for the monsters. We'll move on to the spells. I run two of the new Phantom Knights Rank Up Magic Launch. I know it just came off the list to three, but I still find two uh, as useful as you can get since it is searchable. During the main phase, target one Dark Exceed Monster you control with no Exceed Materials. Special Summon from your extra deck one Dark Exceed Monster. That is one rank higher than that monster you control by using it as Exceed Material. And if you do attach this card to it as an additional XYZ Material, the Special Summon is treated as an Exceed Summon. Exceed Materials attached to it also become exceeds materials uh, on the summon monster and during the main phase you can banish this card from your graveyard then target one dark exceed monster you control attach one the phantom knight monster from your hand to that monster so the graveyard effect for this i'd say is pretty useful just being able to add more monsters on to it but being able to rank up into a bunch of different extra deck monsters which i'll show the main one obviously being dark requiem exceeds dragon great that we have this card back into the deck it's what made this deck one of the most fun ones out there to play but also just being able to have a few other rank four options by ranking up our rank threes on the field is an added bonus also and for some of the one ofs i run one reinforcements of the army it's a searchable uh, card in the deck being able to search out a good majority of the monsters we run one burial from a different dimension being able to reuse our resources for our remove from place spells and traps definitely does help with this one foolish burial more monsters set up in the graveyard and also the one monster reborn for special summoning back cards for short one monster for a play on the field also and I also run two Allure of Darkness. I've kept two in the deck for a good while now. I'm still comfortable with two just for the majority of the cards in the deck are Dark Monsters. We have a few Earths, which can sometimes mess it up. That's why I decided to stick it at two. But the draw power and the fact that we have ways to get the cards back into the graveyard after they're banished is why I like this, just being able to sift through the deck faster. And then for the Sold Link play, which, uh, those of you who aren't familiar, uses Equip Spells to summon out a monster out of the field by sending the Equip Spells. So I run one DDR, Different Dimension Reincarnation, one Phoenix Blade, one Living Fossil, and one Moon Mirror Shield. Just so we have the level four option to go up to, you don't really want to have to draw into these cards. It can happen sometimes, but at least if you open up with one, you still have the other three to send off if you can go into a Sold quickly. Get them out of the deck and then summon out a level three monster with the special summon from the main deck. And that is it for the uh, spells. We'll now move on to the traps. I run three Phantom Knights Fog Blade. This card, you can target one Phantom Knight monster in your graveyard by banishing this card and special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field, which you'll always use it for an Exceed Summon. But the main part of it is it has kind of like a Fiendish Chain effect. You activate this card by targeting one effect monster on the field. Negate that face-up monster's effect. That face-up monster cannot attack. Also, monsters cannot target that face-up monster for attacks. When this card leaves the field, destroy this card. So it's just a way to shut down your opponent's plays and it's searchable with silent boots being able to rely on that and knowing your opponent has to work around this card definitely does help when they have to take on some of your other different monsters you may have on the field and then for some of the one ofs i run one phantom knight's wing one phantom knight's sword and one phantom knight's mist claws having different power up effects protection as well for the deck is why i like running all three of these cards as options in the deck for all your different plays so very very useful for everyone of these to uh, basically just uh, protect cards on the field or just set them up with some of my other ones or just be in the graveyard to banish the special summon phantom knight monsters out onto the field and that is it for the main deck. We'll now move on to the extra deck. I run two of the Phantom Knights uh, Breaksword. This is your main XYZ monster to go into. You need two level three monsters to make it. So using all the non-Phantom uh, Knight XYZ uh, effect monsters can also be used to summon this card. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card, then target one card you control. And one card your opponent controls, destroy them. If this exceeds summon card is destroyed, you can target two Phantom Knight monsters with the same level in your graveyard, special summon them, and increase their levels by one. 
Also, you can add special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except dark monsters. But the overlay of your two Phantom Knight monsters definitely does come in handy for this card because then when it is uh, destroyed, you can special summon them back out onto the field as level fours, and then you can use those Xyz monsters being level fours to go into Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon and then go for the rank up spell play after using Dark Rebellion's effect on the field as well. So very, very strong play relying on the Break Swords. I just have two in the deck. I wanted to focus on some other Xyz monsters. I really only ever need two as well for them. Other than that, the other rank threes I run are one Nightmare Shark, one Super Quantal Mech Beast Grand Pulse, one Dante. It helps with the graveyard setup and with Master Rule, just having this and then still have other monster options available so with this card is a big help also. And then for the rank up plays, I run one Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon, one Evil Swarm Ophion. You rank up into this using the spell and a rank three on the field. So being able to summon out Evil Swarm Ophion using the rank up spell to uh, use with Break Sword is a big help, especially then setting up this card because it shuts down your opponent from special summoning out their level five or higher monsters and then just having a boss rank for 2,550 attack points for your opponent to get over while not being able to special summon level higher monsters can be a big difficulty for a lot of different decks out currently and great to have that play back but uh, still one of my favorites is the Dark Rebellion going into its evolved form which is Dark Requiem Xyz Dragon a true boss monster for the deck that I'm glad we have an easy way back in the deck to summon out. And then for the Link Monsters, I run one Assault. This is for the equip spells in the deck and all the different um, sending, searching that it can do as well. It's very, very useful. Just need two warriors to make it. Also one Wee Witch's Apprentice, one Nightmare Cerberus, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Unicorn, one Boral Sword Dragon, and one Saryuja. Definitely helps with the draw when you need better cards in your hand to use for your plays if you can get the Link plays off to make it. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoy the video. Not sure what other um, deck profiles I'm going to work on for the ban list. Definitely want to give it some thought. But if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them down below. But until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And Kira Twig out.